We're gonna turn this into our very own Raku kiln. <laughs> there are so many ways that you can go about making your own kiln, but based off of the research that I've done and uh, what made most sense to me, here are the materials that I decided to go forth with. So by no means is this the way you gotta do it, but it is how I'm doing it. So I'm gonna just lay out the materials and show you what I'll be working with. All right, let's take a look. First thing, I'll be using a tarp. So first I've got, uh, this is a 31 gallon galvanized steel trash bin. Uh, and I've bought uh, three or four of these actually. So it's really important. One of them is gonna be the Raku kiln itself, but the other ones I'm going to use uh, to hold combustible material so I can put some of the Raku pots into them so they can smolder and I can cover them up. But I also got extra because, you know, if you're going to be doing multiple firings, you'll be able to take out the combustible materials from one of them that you've used and dump them into a spare. So then you can uh, get a new batch started for the next materials because you don't really want to use the same ones more than one time. So investing in a few of them is a pretty good idea, I think. Next up, I got some kiln shelves. I have two shelves here because when I'm going to be layering inside, I'm going to be having insulating fiber to hold the heat. And I'm going to have one patch on the ground. And if you put a pot directly on that, it's going to be a little bit unsteady. So fixing to have, so putting one shelf on the very bottom, We'll be able to stack the furniture on there and then put uh, the pieces on the shelf above it just for more stability. Next up I got a pyrometer as well as a thermocouple to be able to see exactly how hot the kiln is getting. Here is my burner which is quite important. <laughs> so make sure I had to wait a little while just to make sure the parts were right. But the orifice inside should be because I'm doing a propane setup. You can also do a, a natural gas burner if that's what you're looking for. But for me, I'm choosing to do propane, and the orifice looks like this. You'll know the difference between it because the propane orifice, this pinhole is much smaller because it needs a higher um, pressure in order to fire the temperatures that we need. So a natural gas orifice would look like this, but much bigger. Not much, but you know, definitely larger than a pinhole. <laughs> and here are the kiln posts that I got. These are all six inches, which for the size trash barrel I have, I think it's gonna be a pretty good situation because you wanna have enough space for the heat to rise and to accumulate. So um, that's gonna be a good match, I think. We'll see. Next is I've got uh, some soft brick. I bought a few more of them too, just to have some extra around. But for this, for example, I'm going to be cutting, I'm gonna be sawing in half a little bit and having a rest for the burner to go inside of because you don't want the burner flopping around or something happening to it while it's you know in the middle of a firing. So I'm gonna cut into this and place that inside as a little holder for it. I've got a good pair of welder's gloves because it's gonna get really hot. I got a second pair because if I need a partner to hold up the lid, that's gonna be a good thing too because you don't want them to get burned. <laughs> Just another pair of work gloves because when we're working with the insulating fiber, you definitely don't want to be touching any of that. So this is to protect my hands. Some safety goggles too, why not? Another pair of safety goggles, but these are for being able to look into the kiln so you don't burn your retinas over time because, you know, we need our eyes. <laughs> Got a pair of tin snips so I'll be able to cut holes in the kiln itself or in the garbage pail. Uh, and then I have uh, some wire cutters for the high fire wire to cut that. Here's the line of high fire wire that I have. I'm going to be using this to fasten buttons on the inside. And here's my gas line. So this is going to connect into the propane tank and then this end fixes into the burner itself. So uh, this is also, I think this is either 10 or 12 feet long, which is really important just because you wanna make sure that that propane tank, if that's the system that you're going to use, is far enough away from the burner because you know if there was a good wind or something like that, that could catch into the propane tank and you know, I think you can do the math from there. So getting a long one is nice, so then you can kind of tuck that tank around the corner if that's what you're gonna do. So that's important. Got my drill, saw and hammer, ball peen, got measuring tape, a good respirator, raku tongs, uh, and in this bag I've got uh, ceramic fiber. So some places call it insa wool, uh, there's many different names for it, but it is fiber made of ceramic that is basically going to act as the bricks that you would find inside of the kiln, the soft brick, and that is going to be able to insulate it to keep it, you know, it's fire retardant and it's going to really hold in that heat really nicely. So we're going to, that's going to be the first step to do the measurements and line the inside of the kiln and then we'll go from there. Oh, and I almost forgot. 
Here are some buttons. These I made just out of the same clay that I'm going to be firing with. And um, those are going to be fastening the inside of the fabric to the kiln. So I'm going to be drilling holes into the kiln itself. And then these buttons are going to be held with that wire to make sure that it's all flush on the inside of the kiln. So then we have a little bit more space to work with. All right, let's get started. Now I'm going to make another hole about five inches, uh, so it'll be another square, five by five. All right, so now I'm going to drill holes around the base for the buttons, as well as the middle. And I'm also going to do another layer on top, so I'm gonna do those three rows, probably four on each side. So last step over here is I want to make sure to drill a hole for the thermocouple so I know how hot it is in there. So I'm going to do that about halfway and the thermocouple that I've got is um, quite long but I'm not going to put the whole thing there. It's only going to go, you know, just a few inches there and it'll just rest outside on its own. Alright, we got it. All right, so all the buttons are now fastened inside and the um, fabric is all being held flush to the walls of the garbage can, so it's gonna be really good. Here's the lid. Lid's looking great. And on the inside. So now all that's left is to cut the groove inside of the soft brick to hold the burner in place. All right, so now I'm going to uh, saw a groove into the soft brick here. Uh, and that's important because that again is gonna stand outside of here when I'm, uh, the kiln is firing. So, and that's going to be holding on to the burner because if something were to happen to the burner and it might fly to the side or something mid fire, that would just be a disaster. <laughs> so uh, I thought it'd be a really good idea to just make a groove in here and hold it steady. So let's get sawn. Alright, so 
so just finished up. I had to make a little bit of a makeshift <laughs> a little bridge here because I went a little bit too deep because if I had a file, I think that would have gotten a little bit of a smoother edge, but that's okay. A crude um, edge like that is still okay. So I'm going to put it in here like that. It's going to be just at the right height. The tube, once it's uh, attached to the gas line, it should stabilize it. In worst case scenario, I could just put another brick underneath like that, and it should be perfect. So all that's left is to go ahead and start firing some pots. So if you're interested in seeing the result, stay tuned, and I'm definitely going to do that in the next day or two, and I'm looking forward to it. Thanks so much for joining me. I can't wait. <laughs> See you soon.